we now come to the last capsule for week six and this as i said is an optional capsule a few odds and ends that really did not fit in earlier we will now complete one of the things that we shall complete is the proof of the cayley hamilton theorem remember we have proved the cayley hamilton theorem only for upper triangular matrices now we are going to complete it and prove it for all matrices so to do that we will prove a theorem called shuru's theorem shuru's theorem says that given any matrix a of size n cross n no conditions on a we are not assuming a is real symmetric hermitian nothing any n cross n matrix a there is a unitary matrix u unitary means it will have complex entries and unitary means u star u equal to u u star equal to i there is a unitary matrix u such that u star a u is upper triangular any matrix in other words every matrix is similar is unitarily similar to an upper triangular matrix okay the theorem is completely trivial if n equal to 1 if if you have a one cross one matrix it is already upper triangular there nothing must to do now let us assume let us prove the theorem by induction on the size of the matrix n induction over n assume that the result has been established for all n minus 1 by n minus 1 matrices and now take a n cross n matrix a pick an eigen value lambda this eigen value could jolly well be complex never mind take the eigen vector v1 it's going to be a complex vector divide the vector by the length here we are talking about the hermitian <coughs> product on cn not the uh, it's not real so it's hermitian so and i can divide v1 by the length and i can assume that v1 is a unit vector now once i have a unit vector i can always complete it to an orthonormal basis now we are beginning to see the pattern of reasoning the same kind of reason the same kind of an argument is repeating itself again and again and again this is probably the third time you are seeing the same argument complete it to an orthonormal basis v1 w2 dot 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 wn string them together and you are going to get a unitary matrix q q is v1 W W two da 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 W n. Let us calculate A Q. A Q will be A V one A W two da 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 A W n. But A V one is lambda one V one. We know that. Now let us calculate Q star A Q. Let us we want to calculate Q star of A Q. Let us do it systematically. Let us try to first understand what is the first column of Q star A Q. How do I calculate the first column of Q star A Q? Simply apply to even cap. That is Q star of A Q E E one cap. What is A Q E one cap? Lambda one V one. Lambda one comes out. It is Q star of V one. Q star is the adjoint of Q. Q was V one W two etc. W n strung together. Now we must take Q star. Q star will be V one star V W two star written one below the other. Apply to V one. Do the multiplication. V1 star V1 is one. Remember, V1 is a unit vector. W2 is orthogonal to V1, so W2 star V1 will be zero, etc. So what do you get? You get lambda one times one zero 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 zero. So we have we have found that Q star A Q has lambda one zero 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 underneath. In other words, Q star A Q. Looks like this block matrix lambda one underneath put zero and to the right of lambda one is a question mark and B is a n n minus one cross n minus one square matrix. The zero that you see in this block matrix is an n minus one cross one block. The question mark is a one cross n minus one block and B is a n minus one by n minus one matrix. Now, now we we have to apply the induction hypothesis. What does the induction hypothesis tell you? There is a unitary matrix S of size n minus one by n minus one. So that S star B S is upper triangular. Upper triangular of size n minus one cross n minus one. Sure. Now you got this. You caught hold of this unitary matrix S, which is of size n minus one cross n minus one. Now make a n cross n matrix, which is also unitary. How do you do that? One, one, and then you put a string of zeros. 
and underneath the one you put a you put a bunch of zeros and then you put s so this block matrix 100 s is also unitary and q is also unitary product of two unitary matrices is unitary so u which is q product with 100 s is again unitary so i claim that this does the job let us see u star a u what is u star a u 100 s star q star a q 100 s okay but q star a q we already know is lambda question mark 0 b and now i got to take the block multiplication of three matrices do the block multiplication of these matrices and you will easily verify that you get lambda question mark 0 s star b s that is very easy for you to check using block multiplication the s star b s what is s star b s it is upper triangular by, by so s star b s is n minus 1 by n minus 1 upper triangular and you just put a and so this whole thing lambda question mark 0 s star b s is n cross and upper triangular and the inductive step is complete and therewith the proof of Schur's theorem is complete Corollary, the Cayley-Hamilton, the promised Cayley-Hamilton theorem for general case. Every matrix, what is the Cayley-Hamilton theorem? Every matrix satisfies its own characteristic polynomial. First, let us make a simple observation, but a very important observation, a very useful observation. Namely, similar matrices have the same characteristic polynomial. Similar matrices have the same characteristic polynomial and so the res respective coefficients will be the same. Similar matrices have the same trace. Similar matrices have the same determinant. If I take two similar matrices and take the two by two principal minors, they'll agree. If I take the three, sorry, if I take the sum of the two by two principal minors, they'll agree. Some of the three by three principal minors will be the same, etc. The coefficients will be the same. Why is this? Why do similar matrices have the same determinant? So the same same characteristic equation. Let us check what is the characteristic equation of B. B is P inverse A P. What is the characteristic equation of B? Characteristic polynomial of B. Sorry, determinant of x i minus a. Let us write i as P inverse P inverse P. And then uh, let us let us introduce determinant of x i minus a. Let us, uh, let us introduce a determinant of P on the right and a determinant of P inverse on the left. Use the product theorem for determinants and you get determinant of P inverse Xi minus A P. And P inverse P is I. So you get determinant of Xi minus B. So the simple observation, I have given you a proof. It's a simple argument, completely routine. So now we are ready to complete the proof of the Cayley-Hamilton theorem. How do I take through the Cayley Hamilton theorem? Take a matrix A, an arbitrary matrix A, then we know by Schur's theorem there is a unitary matrix U such that U star A U is upper triangular. Call this upper triangular T. F of X is the characteristic polynomial of A, but the characteristic polynomial of A is going to be exactly the characteristic polynomial of T. Why? Because they are similar. T and A are similar matrices. But for, for T, we already checked the Cayley-Hamilton theorem, f of t is 0. But now, if you take a polynomial f and if you compute f of t and then you compute u f of t u star. So, suppose I take t squared, u t squared u star is the same as u t u star the whole square. We already seen this when I did the Cayley-Hamilton theorem. So, uh, when you, f of t is 0, but the special case of Cayley-Hamilton theorem, pre multiplied by u, post multiplied by u star, u f of t u star is 0. Therefore, f of u t u star is 0. But u t u star is a, and therefore f of a is 0. The proof of Cayley-Hamilton theorem is complete. The only question is this green ink, I have written in green ink, how? How do you know that u f of t u star is the same as f of u t u star? Suppose f of x equal to x squared, f of x equal to x cubed, f of x equal to x to the power 4. Can you please check it in this case? Once you check it in this case, you prove that when f of t is, when f of x is x, it is obvious. 
when f of x is x squared u t squared u star is it the same as u t u, u star multiplied with u t u star the middle u star u that you will see when you write down these products the middle u star u will collapse and you keep going and once you once you understand it for the special cases you know how the general case has to be dealt with and that completes the proof of the kelly hamilton theorem and there is a lastly let us ask a very philosophical question we know that when you do maxima minima problems you compute the hessian and you need to understand the sign of the eigen values of the hessian the sign of the eigen values of the hessian the word eigen value is missing i will ins i will link, i will make a change and i will resend the before sending the file the you know we need to know the uh, eigen values uh the sign of the eigen values are important in maxima minima problems the sign of the eigen values are important in identifying the nature of the quadric is it an ellipsoid is it a hyperboloid is it a hyperboloid of one sheet is it a hyperboloid of two sheets in the tutorial problem you will compute an integral like this and you want to understand whether the integral converges in the first place again the sign is important the sign of the eigen values of a will be important so is there a, so i don't want the eigen values themselves all i want is the sign of the eigen values is there a way to find the sign of the eigen values without having to compute the eigen values there is a way and that is called the sylvester's law of inertia given a real symmetric matrix a you take the inertia triple is a number of positive eigen values number of negative eigen values number of zero eigen values. that is called the inertia triple of a and if you take two matrices a and b which are related by the by this equation b equal to p transpose ap when two matrices are related like this they are said to be congruent the sylvester's law of inertia says that congruent matrices have the same inertia so now what i can do is that i can apply elementary operations and i can reduce a to b and b is a simpler matrix eigen values of b are entirely different from the eigen values of a but the number of eigen values which are positive number of eigen values which are negative number of zero eigen values this inertia triple will be the same if a has five positive eigen values so does b if a has three negative eigen values so does b the individual eigen values may not be the same But the total number of positive ones and the total number of negative ones, etc., they will be the same, and that's what I'm interested in. This, I think, with this, I'll end this capsule, and this completes the uh, the 